In this video, we present a wearable robotic forearm intended for human-robot collaboration. We developed two prototypes through an iterative user-centered design process. We found that the robot increases the wearer's reachable workspace volume by about 246%. We also found that the biomechanical loads that the robot applies on the user are well within ergonomic limits. The first prototype, Model 1, had three degrees of freedom, horizontal panning, length extension using a rack and pinion mechanism, and a soft, compliant, cable-driven, two-fingered gripper. With this prototype, we conducted online surveys to find usage scenarios, contextual inquiries at a construction site, and in-lab usability studies. Pictured here is a pick-and-place task conducted in the usability studies. From these studies, we developed design guidelines for the next prototype with 5 degrees of freedom, Model 2. It has horizontal panning, an additional vertical pitching degree of freedom, length extension with a belt-driven rack and pinion mechanism, an additional rotational degree of freedom at the wrist, and a lighter under-actuated two-fingered gripper. For this prototype, we analyze the workspace volume enhancement it provides the user. In order to compute this, we model the human arm as two links with a total of 5 degrees of freedom and a combined human-robot model with 9 degrees of freedom, excluding the gripper. We generated workspace volume point clouds for these models using forward kinematics, then divided them into 2D areas by slicing along the z-axis with a fixed step height h. Finally, we summed up these areas AI to compute the reachable workspace volumes. We found that model 2 shown in yellow enhances the reachable workspace volume by about 246% compared to the normal human range shown in red. We also analyzed the loads that the device exerts on the user by studying the free body diagrams of the human and robot. The loads were computed for two scenarios, self-handover and fetching from below, and they included the forces and moments induced by the robot at the human shoulder and elbow. We found that the biomechanical loads remained within 30% of maximum human limits, as well as the load on the motors did not exceed 50% of the peak rating. Here are some indicative usage scenarios, such as fetching an object from below the user, shown along with load graphs and simulations. The second task is assisted handover of an object to a person who is behind the user. In the future, we plan to make the robot autonomous using human intention prediction, dynamic path planning, and artificial intelligence for robot behavior generation.